Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. When you fast, God moves fast. (laughs) When you fast, what happens? God moves fast. It's not because God is slow. But fasting makes you more open for an encounter. It's like, um, in fact, where it talks about, it's not that my my hands are short that I can't save. So it's, it's not about what God can do, but it's more about how well we can be prepared to receive him. So fasting prepares us and opens us for more receptivity. So let's say if we have 5G here, and your, your phone can only do 3G. So you see, it's not the 5G that is here. That is the problem. It's, so if you can upgrade and change something in your phone to be able to even do 4G, that means you can catch things faster. So fasting retunes you spiritually. That's why when you want to fast, you start fasting, you begin to feel resistance. You feel resistance, and if the resistance doesn't succeed in stopping you, then temptations and opposition, people begin to fight you who shouldn't be fighting you. People begin to do things to provoke you that shouldn't be. Why? Because Satan wants you to slow you down because when you fast, God will move fast. Fasting tunes you for a better receptivity from above. That is why I'm very confident that somebody is receiving a testimony. If you are the one I'm talking about, your amen will show it. I see God favoring you. Amen. Jesus was teaching in Luke chapter 5 verse 17 and the power of God was present to heal. The teaching says and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law with and the power of God was present. The power of the Lord was present to heal through teachings. So I see you enter into another phase. Now when we are fasting and coming to the end of the fasting, that's when one has to be a little bit more alert. Why? Because usually at the end of fasting, things tend to happen. The Bible says at the end of the fasting, Esther took a step. And the Bible says that Daniel fasted three whole weeks. Daniel chapter 10 from verse 2. He said, I fasted three whole weeks. I did not eat any pleasant food. No, any pleasant thing entered my mouth. Three whole weeks was fulfilled. Yeah. He said, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, so he said, I did this till the, in other words, until three weeks, for three weeks, till, God, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Look at the next verse. It says that now on the 24th day of the month, so it started three, on the third day of the month, I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris. What happened? I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed with linen, whose waist was gathered with gold of of, uh, Ufaz. It was an angel. So he described, an angel visited him and he said, Daniel, your prayer has been answered. Yeah. He spoke to him. He said, oh, Daniel, man of great, uh, man man greatly beloved, understand uh, understand the words which I speak to you and stand up for. I have now been sent to you whilst he was speaking this, these words. I, I stood, Daniel said he was trembling. Anyway, he said, I've come to give you answers. But I was withheld. But even though, at the end of three weeks, something showed up. 
all the resistance couldn't take it anymore at the end he said i was fasting and on the third day i was fasting acts chapter 10 from verse 29 i was fasting and he was on the roof praying and within the time of the fasting towards his end of the fasting uh, four days ago i was fasting and, uh, and at ninth hour rather whatever a man stood clothed I was, I, I was fasting, and it was the third day the angel came. So towards the end of the fasting, things come. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3, it says that, and now when he had t- t- came to him, uh, let's, let's look at verse 2. And when he had fasted for 40 days, afterwards, Luke chapter 4 verse 2, Luke chapter 4, verse 2. Being tempted for the uh, and in those he had nothing, and, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry, and the devil started talking to him. So, towards the end, and that's when he finished the devil. In, that, in temptation, he made him small. The, as a human being who is being tempted by the devil, Jesus dealt with him in fasting. Amen. So, I'm trying to say that in the, in the next two days, expect a heavenly visitation. <laughs> Gatherings of believer, believers are so crucially essential. <laughs> crucially essential. Gathering of believers. Or, oh, let's put it this way, gathering of God's people. When God's people gather, it's so essential. There were things Jesus didn't teach, so he has gathered. They were gathered. In fact, Acts chapter 1, verse 4, it says that, and when they had assembled, it was a constant thing. When he resurrected, he went into the place where they have gathered. There's something about our gathering that attracts God. And God works in gatherings. Let's all say that together. God bless you, God. So anything that wants to stop you from being part of the gathering of the believers is trying to stop you from experiencing God in an, in an unusual way. Different things that Satan uses to stop people from being the gathering amongst the believers. Number one is get them distracted by other events. So you do not... Satan will use other activities very quickly and easily to distract you. He likes that a lot. Using activities, and some of them are legitimate activities, but he will use that to distract you. Number two, he also uses <coughs> feelings. So today I don't really feel like it is too hot. Today, today, you shouldn't go to church because you feel like it. You shouldn't go where believers have gathered because you feel like it. <clears throat> so, feelings, you can use your feelings. Number three, you can also use your, uh, your offense. You have been offended. That's why nowadays you don't come because your father died and no one called you. Did you die? Thank God you didn't die. Maybe prayers have kept you alive. Sometimes you forget about see your mother dying does not change the problems you have okay let me see if you have marital problems you are fighting with your wife every day say god forbid <clears throat> fight with your wife and it's become a bigger problem for you and your mother dies listen we are trying to help you through the teaching of God's word so that that actual pro- current problem in your life can stop. Now your mother has died, another issue. But you are using that issue to redraw yourself from where the major problem will be solved. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You are using that, so Satan will use it. So you are offended because on your birthday, no one put your image on their status. <laughs> deep. Whatever you are excited about, you are always quick to show. Things must begin to 
speak very loudly around you. Nothing of value comes without an effort. You want to tap into a certain grace, you got to pay a certain annoying uh, price. Yeah. You have to pay a certain price. You want to catch a grace a person carries or a, a, a grace in a house, you have to pay a price. Not a convenient price. It's not a convenient price. A price that people might rise up against, but you still pay the price. Status. But the point I'm making is that sometimes there's not enough signals around you that corresponds to your so-called commitment to church. That, that's, that, that's all I'm saying. There's not enough weight of signals around you that reflects your claims of commitment. Yeah. If you are really committed, it will show it, in different ways. Then sometimes, yeah, we, you, nobody puts your picture on, the, on their status or your birthday. So now you're upset. That's why you are not coming to fellowship. Okay. So offense. Offense can stop you from coming to fellowship. Coming to church meetings. He said, now this, I even watch online. So, gatherings are important. And Satan will use anything to block your gathering. He will use activities. He will use your feelings. I'm tired today. He will use your fear. He will use your offense. And he will use fear. Fear. So, I've seen this man... I, I, I feel, I, I just have a conviction that I should bless this man. Because I can tell the hand of God is on his life. Just when I was about to bless him, this guy said, I mean, it's not everywhere I take my money to because some of these people, you can't trust anybody. So now he's afraid. Am I doing the right thing? The way I'm going to give this thing to this person. Is, is this something? Or maybe, okay, let me, let me downgrade it. See? Because there's a, a certain level of trepidation. Trepidation. The Bible said, perfect love casts out fear. First John chapter 4, I think verse 16 or somewhere there. Perf- 18. Perfect love casts out uh, fear. Okay. So that is what the enemy, some of the things that amongst other things, the enemy will use to block you from fellowshipping. Now, but why is fellowship important? Am I teaching at all? Yes. Why is fellowshipping important? When we gather... God likes our gathering because when we gather, it gives God opportunity to do something personally in your life. Some of the personal things that happen in your life is when we gather, Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 11 that my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Coming together is for somebody an opportunity to, to say one. Coming to church, you have to listen. There are times there's a problem you are dealing with. And you haven't finished dealing with the matter. Or something has come up. You know you have service in the evening, this evening. Don't tackle it. Say, I'll be back. When I, let me go to church first. Let me go to church. Let me go and spend time in a place of prayer. And then when I come, now I'll have a clarity of mind to be able to deal with this challenge that is coming. Because suddenly, my landlord has come and turned off all the lights and taken off the roof. Now, instead of running after him, it's almost, I don't know, I'll, I have service this evening. All right, and it's now 1, 8, 1 p.m. I have service at 7. Okay, six hours later. Okay, you let me go and I'm going to church and come. Yeah. Then after church, I will, I will tackle this thing. The doctors have said something to you. Before you start talking to other people about it, you let me go to church. Especially when you know church is coming. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? When you know you have a service ahead of you, take advantage of it and say, okay, I'm going to church. and come. Some of you, I've always told people, maybe you are, you are going through a difficult time. You are not sure what decision to make. And we are about to start fasting. Oh, you are coming, Pastor. I'm not, I said, you wait. Let's finish the fasting. Let's spend enough time praying. Sometime before we finish, before we, we could say, Jack, God has actually visited you. Amen. So, one of the things that God can, God, God uses the gathering of the believers to do personally in your life is give you the chance to pray. And in prayer, you tackle difficult matters. And matters that 
need the hand of God, you tackle them in prayer. So, gathering gives us the opportunity. You can pray when you are private. But there is something about prayer among the saints. Praying with the brethren. And the Bible says, when they were let go, Acts chapter 4, verse 23, they went to their own company. And when they have told them all these things, they lifted up their voice, verse 24, and began to pray. So, prayer. Number two, it gives us the opportunity for the word of God to come to us. The word of God comes to us when we gather. The word of God, and it says, and the word of the God came to the son of Amos. Oh, Amos. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. He said, get up and go to Zerapha. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. It gives us an opportunity for a word. Listen. Nothing secures spiritual testimonies faster than when your heart is moved by a word from God. This year, sometimes music can move you, it's good. Sometimes someone can say something, testimony can touch you and all that, it's good. But when a word moves your heart, it secures, brings you closer to a state of testimony than any other thing. A word. That's why the apostles said we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and prayer. Because those two things are non-negotiables when it comes to divine visitation. So when we come to church, sometimes it might not even be a long preaching, but a word, something from the scripture. That's why it is wrong to preach without quoting scripture. It's really wrong. It's really wrong. It's really wrong. It's really wrong to preach or attempt to preach without quoting scripture. You might not know the reference, but you must know what the word says. It said, Jesus didn't quote man, and the Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, it is written, man shall not live. He didn't quote that one. He just said, it is written. You sit and go and look for where it's written, but it is written. So you must, sometimes you might not have the references, but you must have the word inside. That is somewhere, you know it's somewhere written inside it. And when we come to church, it affords the word to enter us. Number three. What gathering does personally to you is faith. When you come to church, there's the gathering of the believers has a way of boosting your faith. Yeah. Boosting your faith. When we come together, <coughs> the gathering of the believers it has a way of boosting your faith. Number four. Listen, when your faith says yes, heaven will not say no. Amen. Actually, you really need faith. Because Jesus said, <laughs> He said, Someone, someone. Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 31. Someone, someone. Satan has desired to save you like wheat. But I prayed for you. That your faith, <clears throat> he said, but I have prayed for you that your faith, look at verse 20, 31. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may, that means he hasn't done it yet. That means he's not doing it now. That's his plan and he has desired to. One translation says, Satan has desired. Hey, what does the King James say? <clears throat> Satan has desired to have you. That's his plan. He has desired, just like Potiphar's wife, cast a longing eye on Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. Satan has developed a very strong appetite for you. Yeah. Sometimes Satan can develop an appetite for your health. Sometimes Satan can develop an appetite for your finances. Sometimes Satan can develop an appetite for your ministry and your spiritual life. So he said, Satan has desired to sift you, to have you, and to sift, sift you like wheat, wheat. So that's his plan. But he said, I have prayed for you. I have
have prayed for you. That what your faith fails not. So this this is was prophesying about what's about to happen, and he says that you need faith to enter that season. When you come to church, it gives you faith to enter the coming seasons. You are able to generate faith to enter the coming season. Nobody knew what was coming. He said, I have prayed for you that when that crisis comes, when those challenges come, your faith faileth not. One of the miracles that never, there's, that, there's no miracle like that in the Old Testament. Blind eye seeing. No. In fact, that's why the blind eye, the blind man, my, uh, my, chapter 5, um, John chapter, chapter 9, rather, he asked them, Have you ever heard of a blind man's eye being open? It wasn't part of the miracles that were happening, God was doing in the Old No, it wasn't Old Testament miracle. It was very particular. So he says that go and tell him. And Isaiah said that blind will see when the Messiah comes. So he said, go and tell him the lame walk, the blind see. They have their sight restored. Mm. Then look at what Jesus added. That's where I want you to, please, Matthew, go and tell them that they arrived to rest them. The gospel is preached to them. And the poor have the gospel. Look at the next verse. Read it. Blessed is he who is not offended because This is not the time to be offended because you are in prison. Wow. This is not the time to be. He should have, sir, he should have told the people who came mm. that. John the Baptist was such a great man. John, he didn't tell them. He waited after the people have left. Then he started telling the crowd that amongst all people born by women, there's not like John the... Oh, <laughs> it's your, your Bible. He started praising John the Baptist, not to the people who are going to John, but to the people who are just away from John. Offense. I'm glad because... On the timetable of your life, at this juncture, your car will be clumped. But it's good you were in church before that season came. Before, so it will be clumped anyway. But now, it is a, that, that, that you are a man whose car has been clumped, a woman whose car has been clumped, and, but yet you are in faith and you just finished church. You, they came a little late. They should have come before you go to church. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. When you come to church, faith rises. Yeah. When you come to the gathering, faith, why do you think that God will not give you your marriage? Why are you afraid about your health? Why are you afraid God can't do it for you? Yeah. You cannot stay in the presence of God and ever remain the same you are. Yeah. I see a testimony running towards you. Yeah. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Yeah. Is somebody learning something? Yes. Faith rises up. Number three, number four. When we come to church, when we come into the gathering, one of the things that happen is that encounters are given. How many of you have come to church and something happened to you which you can't explain? But it's, this is amazing. Wow. Well, what is this? What is this? You can see that something, that's even sometimes you cry and say, God, I'm changing from today. Something has happened to you. Something has happened to you. And especially at environments like this. You go home and you can't even sleep. You sleep and your sleep is disrupted because you feel like praying. Not because of you are afraid of something evil or ominous happen, about to happen. But you just, you just feel a presence. You just feel that you have gotten the breakthrough. Yes, but why do you laugh at someone when they are expressing their faith? You, 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 are, you, are, you are a problem. You are one of those who are telling blind by Timon, you sit down, you are shouting too much. Someone is busy. This is a faith catching uh, 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 environment, a miracle catching environment, encounter, encounter getting environment. Allow people to release their faith, to shout their amen, to jump and scream. Shout, I believe. Sit down. Let me finish. Yeah. Somebody's catching your husband. Yeah. Husband is catching your wife. Yeah. Yes. Catch the word which will manifest in the next four years or the next five years. That's what I mean. The word will manifest. So catch a word. So when we come into a meeting like this, it's encounters. It gives someone an opportunity to have a personal encounter. Amen. Encounter. 
when you come to an atmosphere like this, you are likely to have an encounter. And tonight, someone will have an encounter. So, our gatherings, what do our gatherings do for us personally? The gathering do number one, what? Gives us opportunity to pray. Number two, to hear a word from God, the word of God, to hear the word of God. Number three, to, to boost our faith. Number four, it is your encounters that determines the quality of your testimony. So, and lastly, let me add this. When we, uh, when we come together in fellowship, genuine Christian fellowship, you will always get the chance. When you come to church, it gives you the opportunity to say, all I have to say, Baba, she all I have to say Baba He said he said Where not ten cleansed Where are the nine? Did they not come back? Ah, ah, ah. He said, were, were, were there not ten cleansed? Luke chapter 17, verse 17. That was. Were there not ten cleansed? Hey. Jesus said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Verse 18. Were there not any found who, who what? What's, what does it mean to return? To come back. So, gathering gives you opportunity to come back. To come back. Not to always come and ask. Sometimes you need to come back to say, Baba, Baba, oh, Eshe. Please sit down. Let's thank God. Let's thank God before actually the benediction okay benediction blessing people before they leave it's not more about god protect you god no it's not more about that in the new testament it starts with unto him who by his power created is that's you are giving thanks now you are acknowledging him and throwing it to him that he alone deserves that's why it says that unto him who is able to do exceeding Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, 21 and uh, 20, uh, 20 and 21 unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can take or ask of according to the power that works in us verse 21 unto him be the glory in the church now and f- throughout all generations every time church church must end with thanks don't leave church without thankfulness in your heart yeah, that's what it's called, talk so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. I, t- I think I heard someone saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Sometimes, when you even hear something that is not nice, say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Th- when, when things don't make sense and you are just confused, say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But when you come to church, it creates an atmosphere to be able to say a quality hallelujah. the biggest things I'm supposed to end now but I always want to share one of the biggest things that anybody can be any believer can be thankful to God for is Ephesians 1 7 that he how he has forgiven us he has we have redemption is that in him we have redemption through the fire Can I digress a bit? Can I, can I, can I digress a bit? I'll share something with you. I, this thing blessed me so much. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 5, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. I was trying to talk about it last Sunday, but they were messing up with the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. What does it say? If 
if you justify the wicked, you are an abomination to God. Somebody who is not innocent, someone who is a sinner, someone who is a gu- guilt, uh, who is guilty, someone who is, gu- who is who is carrying guilt, is guilty. You justify such a person, you are an abomination to God. But that's exactly what God Himself did. Romans chapter four, verse five. God did. What he said is abomination to me. He did it because of you. Romans chapter 4 verse 5. But to him who does not work but believes on him that justifies. God justifies the ungodly. God has specialized. The speciality of God is forgiveness of sins. <laughs> chapter, verse 10. Verse 10 of Mark chapter 2. Uh, Mark, yeah, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. What does verse? Mark chapter 2, verse 10. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. <laughs> I found out sins don't send people to hell. Sins don't send people to hell. I'm sure you would have been a candidate of hell. That's why we can't finish saying thank you. What, so what sends people to hell? Unforgiving sins. Unforgiving sins is what sends people to hell. And today, God looked at you and said, neither do I condemn you. And you are finding it difficult to say thank you. In Micah, in Micah chapter 7, verse 18 and verse 19. Micah chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. Who is a God like you? and passing over the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage he does not retain his anger forever because he delights delights in mercy look at the next verse look at the next verse he will he will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities you will cast all our sins into the depths of the seas Oh, sinners like us, forgiving and can't say thank you. Ah, even without music, why don't you lift your hands and just show appreciation? Show appreciation. God forgives sins, and for that, we are thankful. Can I bring you a little bit home to some of you? Only God knows, even in the, these times of fasting, what type of images you've watched. What types of thoughts you have processed. Some of you have are pro- processing lustful thoughts and then you are still preaching. You are still preaching on the streets. Winning souls. <laughs> You are still in church sweating, sweating and believing God for a miracle. Hey, you! And sometimes you are surprised God shows you favor. What, what, what? I don't think we have much to say, but all I have to say.
lastly, the greatest thing we can be thankful for, that's the, that's the greatest thing uh, the gospel offers, which is forgiveness of sins. In Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And that's the verse 2, forget not his benefits. Who, who forgives all, hey, not some who, God in Christ found God in Christ found a way to justify the ungodly and still not be an abomination to himself. Just you. So the biggest reason for thanksgiving to a Christian for a Christian's for a Christian's forgiveness of sin. But you yourself, besides all of us owing God thanks, you yourself. You remember, after you have to think between January and now, there was a time you thought you would lose that, your job. In fact, when you were going to meet your boss, you thought that this thing was not going to happen. But it was something unrelated. It turned out not to be what you were afraid could happen. Yeah. <laughs> and you were praying and God has shown you mercy. <laughs> so this time, we are going to say a short thanks again. But personally, what can you remember that could have gone wrong and you were, you were worried it was going to go wrong and you were believing God and it didn't go wrong and you forget, you forgot so quickly to come back to say, Father, I, I bring you back thanks. I mean, if you understand what I'm saying. You forgot to come. That loan application almost fell, fell through. Yeah. That mortgage almost didn't go through. That application, that examination, that you knew that you have, this one is a fail. Yeah. And the paper came, and yet the results came, you are very confused because it felt like there's something going on. And yet, you haven't been able to come and say thank you. You forgot you got a new job. You got a new job that others will do anything for, they are not getting. Lift up your hands and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him. Father, we come back with thanks. We come back with thanks. We come back to you with our thanks. We come back to you with our thanks. For what could have gone wrong and didn't go wrong? What could have gone wrong and didn't go wrong? Come on, come on, come on. The, um, the, the devil wanted you to die, but you are still here. The enemy wanted to kill you, but you are still here. You are here to say thank you. I've come back to say thank you. I just said, I just came to say thank you. I'm back again. Here I am, Lord. I'm back again. Sometimes, loved ones around you, their lives were at stake. Yeah. But for your sake, God spared them. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Your auntie almost died. Died. Was in intensive care. You were so worried. You prayed. And today you've forgotten. And it's just about four months ago. Your little nephew was in intensive care. The whole family was distraught. Today, he's running around playing football. No, 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 no. There are times you knock on God's door and God said, who is there? So it's me. So who is there? You mention your name. He said, ah, you are back again? He said, yes, Lord, I'm back again. Yeah, what? This time, what's that? No, God, I just... Hey. Thank you, Lord. I just came to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And he said, oh... God said, oh, you remember? Because usually people forget when I do it. You remember? He said, God, thank you. He said, okay, after you have thanked me, what can I do? He said, God, no, no. 
You've done enough. I just want to continue to thank you. And then, and then, and then you go, you go back. That's what David did. Bible says he sat on the floor and he said, "What? What is me? What is my house? Carries? What are we? It's not because we pray more powerful." Many churches will pay young people to come to church. They will pay. They will pay anything. We, we don't struggle. What have we done? David said, Lord, what have I done? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And then as though if this was not enough, you are still doing more. <laughs> What's my house? And why you read that? Samuel account. No, no. Chronicles account. The first Chronicles account. He says, as though this was not enough. You are doing more. You know, you are promising to bless my house in future. I'm nobody. I was a shepherd boy. You took me from following sheep and made me a king. And you gave me my master's wife. You have done so much for me. Even when I sinned against you, you forgave me. You've done so much. And now, as though what you have done is not enough. You want to do more? David said, Lord, I will thank you forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you forever. It's like, so you come back again. You just say, ah, it's me. God said, you again? He said, yes, God. I just came to say thank you. He said, okay, after that, what again? I know you normally have something you want to ask. God, no, this time only thanks. Then you go. A few hours or a few days later, you come back, knock again. Okay, who is there? It's me. Who? You? You again? Ah, okay. What? What do? What can I do for you? God? I'm coming to say. But I said you've said it already. God, I want to say because you keep doing it. And and God said. God. God, God said. God. 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 God said, but you have thanked me already for your husband, for your wife. Why are you coming again? And then you say, God, you've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. So what one, one moment cannot finish it. Narakele, oh God. You've done for me. Yes, it's, then the Kidemi went and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, oh, oh Lord God? And what is my heart that you have brought me? See how far you This was a small thing in your eyes, oh God. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come and have regard, uh, regarded me according to the rank of the men of high ah, degree. Me, you are treating me like I'm so big. So, yet, this was, so, I, I thought this is a small thing. What you have done is so big and you are God, you want to do more. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.